Mr. Andros Townsend, Simon, what, what are we going to talk about this morning? <laughs> <laughs> where, do, where do we start? Andros, how are you, mate? You, I like me, were good. there. Yeah, what an atmosphere. I mean, I, 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 I'm 63 years of age, mate. I don't, I've, I've never seen anything like it. I'm, I must I, be honest. I've been all over the world. Yeah. I've, I've never known a, a tense atmosphere like that in my life. I've been playing every week for the last 12, 13, 14 years. I've never witnessed anything near that. The, the, the tension and then obviously once we get the second goal and, and the final whistle went it was listen I, I was emotional I was, I was only in the crowd it was unbelievable I can only imagine what Sunday's going to be like oh doesn't bear thinking about it does it it really was I have to say Simon I mean you, the, you say the this, England fans were unbelievable last night unbelievable you say this that you've you've never seen an atmosphere yeah. or an experience like that well that's obvious because you've been following Scotland so <laughs> alright we'll get the, we're we're not going to have that experience six are minutes you? past ten Andros but of course, that in I mean, of course this is a culmination of, of of four or five years in this country of division and of challenges of people being at one another's throats <laughs> it's people like you divide us with, 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 with Brexit and with other issues with the pandemic and a whole raft of things. And what you've got is a central yeah. opportunity to focus energy into something that means something. The national sport means something to a lot of people. Oh, it does. And so what you've got is a group of England players and specifically the manager doing what they what it says on the can, mm. which is delivering back some pride, delivering a team that's capable of competing mm. and taking advantage of the draw and some of the fortune that's come their way, but taking advantage of it and mm. for once making it land in our garden luck rather than well, other people's. I, I think as well, because you've said that there's so much riding on that national team because of everything that's gone on the last few years, that adds to pressure. And these guys, Gareth Southgate in particular, he's done an unbelievable job in getting the public and getting the media all behind the England team. Yeah, yeah. I, I think also that you know you're in a situation where you've got elite players mm. playing in an elite tournament, representing their country, and and really and truly they should be able to operate at this level. Now that's easier said than done. But if you're an elite footballer and you're capable of playing for your national side, then it becomes about how you react to the circumstances and you're playing and you're playing in a tournament where the privilege and opportunity is so significant so unprofessional, that man. you've got to oh, be able to respond to I can't believe he does it. that, Andros. Yeah, I know. I know it I know. put him right off his stride. <laughs> did it you didn't, see that? Actually, it didn't. Um, the, the, There's an Italian the, texting me about how we're going to get beat on Sunday. The, the, the thing of it is, Andros, in adversity, they've shown what they can do. I mean, Denmark scored a wonderful free kick mm. and yet they came back and they win the thing last night. We'll talk about how it was won yeah. shortly. And I'm not, this, this is no anti-English thing about was that a penalty, was it or not. We have to do that this morning mm. on TalkSport. We want to get your your views on that as well. But they had to do it the hard way. They went one down, they came back, and they, and they got there. With hindsight, it was the best thing that could have happened because now we've been through that adversity. We've been down. We know the players are going to keep their heads up. They're going to keep going because when they scored, I must say I was worried. There was a few fans who were like, here we go again. Yeah. Maybe a few of the heads went down in the England players and it was like, oh, 2018 all over again. And that can breed. We saw with the previous generation, it was the, the quarter final was their sort of mental barrier. And we saw an England team last night get through that. And I'm, I'm so happy they did. Yeah. Uh, I must say, Simon, at this stage, the story of the night, um, we assembled in the Hilton Hotel, some people from TalkSport, we walk over to the stadium. Of course, it's getting close to kickoff. Feelings are running high. I have to say, as a Scot, I felt magnificent last night in amongst the England fans. 99% of the England fans who I encountered were absolutely brilliant, mm. passionate, right behind Gareth and the team. Uh, fantastic to me. God knows how many photographs uh, that uh, I posed for on the way in with some terrific people. There are the usual minority clowns who douse me in beer <laughs> and tell me what they think of me. And I laughed. And if he's listening yeah, I this morning, to do that. <laughs> I, I walked over to one of them and said, I feel so sorry for you. you you've just embarrassed yourself in front of your yeah. mates. Look at your mates. And the guy, uh, you know, unrelenting, came right back at me. For the most part, last the vast majority mm. of them last night were astonishingly magnificent behind Southgate and, and the team. I, I really salute the strength of support that England had last night because, honestly, the advantage it gave England yeah. was it was there to be heard, to be seen. It was incredible, Simon. There was no way that crowd were going to tolerate England losing. Yeah, but that also takes an immense amount of, of fortitude from the players to be able to not wilt under that immense pressure. Yeah, which is when what you said, When adversity Andrew. comes in. Yeah. And, of course, I would expect elite players not to wilt, but there's been players that have wilted in circumstances like that. And when we talk about... 
man, people that behave in a poor fashion, there is a propensity in the media to focus on a very vociferous minority of people that behave in a fashion which is unbecoming. You'll have a segment of Scottish fans, are fabulous fans on whole, but you'll have a segment of Scottish fans course, that will behave in a certain course, way. Yeah. I'm not surprised. I don't see it as a surprise. I said yesterday in a soliloquy that I believe that, it, that supporters in this country and this island, this United Kingdom, are the greatest supporters, whether it comes to boxing or whether it comes to cricket or the tennis or certainly our national support. You'll always have an element of yeah. people that whether want to behave. Whether they are or not. I mean, you can't really say that, Simon, because our Brazil fans agree you bet they are. I was in the what, opening game what, of the World Cup in 1998, and they, I'll tell you what, they'll beat anybody hands down. Well, they'll I tell mean, you. Having, having travelled, having travelled with, say, like Lennox Lewis and watched the British boxing fans in Las Vegas and, yeah. and places like that in New York, having watched the Davis Cup semi finals against uh, opposition that mm. come from, from the South Americas, mm. having watched the cricket in Australia, having seen different sports, and our fans have a uniqueness about them in terms of the Barmy Army, the national support. We take fans like no other country does around the world in volumes and the support from 99% of them is absolutely mm. incredible and sometimes in a backdrop of not winning anything I wonder if the Brazilians hadn't won anything for 55 years they'd be trailing around the world like our fans do mm. with the well, kind we'll of support that we provide true, we'll never know we'll never know um, is, the, is the entire nation on the brink do you think Andros <laughs> um, is this country after, after so many years 55 year wait you're touching it. Are you going to lift it on Sunday? I'm more confident now going into Sunday than I have been the last three knockout games. I think there's a lot of pressure, um, especially in, in the Germany game, um, playing a big nation so early, the pressure that goes with that, and then Ukraine and Denmark, the so-called weaker teams, you're expected to win and all the pressure that goes with that. Whereas the final is just, we're happy we got there. Yes, we have the quality to win it, but the fans are just going to enjoy the day, win, lose or draw. And hopefully that mentality and that, um, the, the spirit from the fans like you mentioned last night if they bring that again mm. I'm sure they'll drag us to, to a victory I hope they'll drag us to a victory yeah yeah. Uh, again Simon uh, the England fans will not have anything other than England winning this on Sunday I mean uh, it's they'll hard have, to describe they'll, they'll this morning Andrew Ross they, uh, <laughs> I've never known a support last night who just were not going to tolerate defeat I mean it was is that not right, Andrew? It was I, astounding. I agree, but I think England scored at the perfect time Absolutely as well, right. just before half time. Because right. if yeah. we went into the break one nil down, the crowd might have got a bit restless. The longer Jack Grealish didn't come on in the second half, the crowd could have turned a little bit. So I think same against Ukraine, we scored perfect time. We scored uh, the start of both halves and. I think scoring that goal definitely right. just eased a bit, of, right. a bit of tension. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, well, we're going to get in amongst this, Andros. Um, I was talking to you just before we came on air. Simon, uh, you'll be interested in Andros's take on this. Uh, as a top player, what happens yeah. when you're knocked over in the box? So I, I'm looking at the messages. Don't ignore this, Jim White. Are you not going to talk about the sterling mm -hmm. dive for the penalty? Of course we're not going to ignore it. It's our mm -hmm. job to talk about it. But don't think for one goddamn moment this morning that I'm bringing this up because I'm anti-English. I'm getting bored with this now. I am not anti-English. I've lived 23 years here and I know what it's all about. So please, get over yourselves about that and we can have an adult conversation about the events at Wembley last night and look forward to Sunday. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.